Teams are going to be maneuvering for pool position in round two of the Challenge Cup. My name's Mark. Let's talk rugby. Okay, so before we get into this week's games, we're going to have a quick look at the pools. So pool A, we have Cardiff and Toulon heading the way. Both teams had bonus point wins in the first round. Then we have Bristol, Connacht and Glasgow, who all had wins but no bonus point in the first round as well. Bath on one point in sixth place, which is the the last qualifying spot for the knockout stages this season. We then have Zebra just behind them. And propping up the table, you have Newcastle, Perpignan, and Breve all on zero points. Into Pool B then, we have Scarlet's only team to get a bonus point win in this pool. And then Stade Francais and Cheetahs, both wins in the first round. Dragons and the Lions, who shared the spoils in their game. And then we have Pau, who are in sixth place. and in that last spot to qualify. I have to say, given um, the actions of their coach last weekend and um, the fact that the guy only got a 10-week ban for manhandling a referee, um, I'd be happy if they (laughs) dropped down that pool, I have to say. Normally, I don't cheer against teams, but I, I did not agree with you know um his punishment at all i think we probably shouldn't have seen that guy again this season at all um but (laughs) let's leave that aside for the minute we then have uh benetton and um bayonne are on zero points at the bottom of the table there round two games first up on friday we have the lions against stad so lions drew Last weekend against the Dragons, another home game for them. Stad won at home against Benetton. They're going to look to get a second win. And again, um, that second win probably would put them through to the knockout stages or pretty close to it. But going away to South Africa is difficult for, you know, any team. So I think Lions are probably looking to give the their fans a home win as well on for that one hopefully we don't see like an an empty stadium for this as well um it's a big team coming to town and hopefully the fans turn out for for that then we have Bree versus Connacht so Breve lost their first one they got absolutely trashed by Cardiff they're playing Connacht to one at home against the Falcons. Wasn't a spectacular win by Connacht, but still, um, we've seen Connacht before go away to France in this competition come close. They, I think they have won on a couple of occasions as well away. So might be able to nick a win away. Again, it depends on what type of team Brief put out, really, I think. Then we have... Um, Glasgow versus Perpignan. So Glasgow, decent win for them away to bat in the first round. Perpignan losing at home to Bristol. Not really great for them to start off, was it? And probably in Glasgow as well. They're going to struggle there. Glasgow, good attacking team. Um, and they're probably going to have too much for Perpignan in, in that game. And again, maybe Glasgow putting one foot into the knockout stages if they can actually win that. Then we are into the Saturday game. So we have Toulon versus Bat. So this one, we got like Toulon who got a bit of a scare really last week against Zebra, but were able to pull the win out there. Bat who lost at home. Um, but I think going away to a team like Toulon is going to be a bit too much for them to get their first win. So expecting a home win in that one, I think if Bath are going to stand any chance of progressing, they probably do need to get something out of the game, whether that's a losing bonus point or an actual win. But again, probably favoring the home team there. We then have the Cheetahs 
versus the Scarlets. So the Cheetahs, the invited team, um, who beat Pow last weekend, um, away from home against Scarlets, who um, had a very good win against Bayonne. And so this is going to be this is going to be a decent game. I feel with this one, we saw, um, you know, Welsh teams in the last few weeks actually performing well in South Africa. We had Cardiff becoming the first Welsh region to um, win away in South Africa, and that that was followed up then with the Dragons last weekend getting that draw against the Lions in this competition. So Scarlet shouldn't fear going away, and especially seeing as the Cheetahs are not actually in the URC um, anymore. They were in like a couple of seasons ago. But Cheetahs as well, they've got a chance now playing against a URC team to show, you know, why they maybe feel that they should be, still be included in the URC by potentially beating the Scarlet. So that's going to be a decent game to watch a feel. Next time we have the Dragons who got that draw, as I said, last week in South Africa against the Lions. They're at home to Pau. Um, Pau who lost at home to the Cheetahs. So I think like Di Flanagan definitely has, like he's turned the Dragons around so well since the start of the season. When like he took over after what two rounds or something of the URC, and you can see he's built a lot of um, strength into that team, like a lot of kind of mental strength. They hang on in games, whereas before they would have put the heads down and lost by by a big score. So I'm expecting the Dragons to to win this one and probably comfortably as well. And as I said, kind of talking about the pools, how Sebastian what. I can't remember the guy's second name, but the, the head coach of Pau, how that guy only got 10 weeks when like he basically manhandled a referee. And then we have um, also like this week, Wayne Barnes coming out and talking about how his wife and his children have been targeted with abuse and stuff like that as well. Like the, we've got to protect our officials better than we do. Now, do referees make mistakes? Absolutely they do. But do coaches make mistakes? Yes. Do players make mistakes? Yes, they do. But referees get it from all sides every single game. Like, and you can be guaranteed, like, you, you, I bet you have a friend. And if, if you don't have a friend that does this, maybe you are the friend that does it that complains about the referee every single game. They never see a referee that has a good game when it's their team involved. And, that's the kind of bias that referees are up against for that kind of thing. So, you know, I know like some people don't want to hear it, but yeah, that guy should have been banned for the rest of the season as far as I'm concerned. There's no way that that is acceptable in the game of rugby. And I feel like we're at a kind of a tipping point where, you know, they have to be stronger on stuff like this that we, we've seen coaches disrespecting the referee and players doing the same as well and you know coming out again referees make mistakes and they'll hold their hands up themselves and tell you yeah they're not perfect they make mistakes but they don't deserve the abuse that they get and we've always had a good tradition of respecting the referee and rugby for the most part and i feel like it's a tradition that we really should hold on to but that's enough of that one. Yeah, I'm going for the Dragons for a comfortable home win in that game. Next time we have Bayonne versus um, Benetton. So in the first round, Bayonne got trashed by the Scarlets. Benetton, they're actually in the game against Stad. I know the score 24-14 looks like a comfortable win for Stad. But Benetton were winning that game with 60 minutes to go. Um, so it wasn't that comfortable for Stad. Now, they are. Um, like in this one, maybe the fact that they're away from home again is gonna make it difficult for them. But they're gonna get beyond a game. I feel in this one, like Benetton. If over the last few seasons we've seen them becoming more and more competitive in the URC and being able to climb the table, and 
I think in this competition as well, that the the level of this competition is at Benetton, um, it's only a matter of time really before they go deep into the knockout stages of the Challenge Cup if they keep on improving as they have been season on season. But for this game, it's going to be actually difficult. I want to tip Benetton to nick a win, but I think it's going to be close either way. Next time we have Newcastle Falcons against Cardiff. So Falcons lost away to Connacht in the first round. Didn't really produce much in that game. And Cardiff had a really comfortable win at home, like 41-0 or something like that, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, 41 nil against Breve. So it's going to be interesting to see, can Cardiff bring the confidence from that first round game into this one? And can Falcons actually produce something at home? Um, probably going to be a fairly exciting game to watch because Falcons won't be as abject as they were away from home. Now they, they will be playing at home and Cardiff, you know, they can be up and down at times, but at least they do play some decent attacking rugby. Then into the, the only game that we have on Sunday, which is Bristol Bears versus Zebra. So this one here, we have um, Bristol who won away at Perpignan in the first round against Zebra, who gave Toulon a hell of a match at home. But I think that's the key word there is last week, they are at home this week. They're away. Zebra haven't traveled well in the URC at all this year. Um, even at the start of the year where they were fairly competitive at home, their away form, you know, they weren't really turning up for away matches. So because of that, I expect Bristol to, to win this one. Zebra, though, they, they do like a counter attack and they are very good actually at transitioning from defense to attack when they do get those counters so i'm expecting them to maybe get um you know a couple of breakaway tries or something and make bristol sweat for a bit but i would expect bristol to come through with the win in the end so that's the that's your games for this weekend um some teams after this round are probably going to be looking like they're they're almost certainly guaranteed through to the knockout stages and then other teams are going to be in the complete opposite end of the scale where they're going to have to produce amazing results in the last two um, last two games to actually make the knockout stages. So even though it is only the second round, there's still a lot to play for in these ones. <laughs> 